I basically played baseball from the age of seven until I got hurt at 23 and then retired at 25 after a series of surgeries on my arm. And I was super bummed when baseball ended, as you could imagine, right? Yeah. It was half a lifetime ago now for me. But one of the things that I had become most fascinated by when I was playing baseball that I thought was a sports phenomenon, but then I got my first job working for a tech company in the late 90s and realized it was a human phenomenon was there was this thing in sports we call chemistry and it mm -hmm. was all that intangible stuff. Cause like I was on some teams sometimes really good players, really good talent, but the team would underperform, you know, the coach was weird or guys were jerks or there was a lot of egos or whatever it was. We wouldn't perform well together. We had bad chemistry, right? Then I was on other teams where it's like, you know, decent talent, amazing chemistry. And we would play incredibly well. Like we would beat other teams that had better players than we did. I always played better on teams with good chemistry. Again, I thought that was a sports phenomenon. I get my first job back in the 90s working for an internet company during the dot-com boom, and I realized, oh, wait a minute. That's not a sports thing. That's a human thing. My manager was just calling it culture, and I was like, what is that? No one could define it. It was intangible. It was kind of hard to quantify, but it's really, really powerful, right? And there's all the cliches and sayings in the world, you know, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So most of what I've studied for the last almost 25 years doing this work is what are those intangible things that make teams great? And on an individual level, what do we need to do from that mindset sort of intangible side so that we can be as effective as possible? So that's a long preamble back to your question of like, it's important to really invest in those intangible things because just getting the right talent on the team, while that is incredibly important, that's not enough because we've all been part of teams and whether you run a small business, whether you work for a bigger company, whether you're just starting your own side hustle, whatever it is, it's like not just about the talent and the skills. It's about something else. And that's something else. And everybody watching and listening obviously knows that to some degree else they wouldn't be watching and listening to us right now. But it's really investing in that our own personal growth, as well as investing in the health of the team in an ongoing way. I love using the word chemistry over culture. Yes. To me, culture, it just doesn't mean anything. I mean, I, yeah. I know it has a meaning, but I feel like you, you, uh, it's like sand sifting through your hands as an yes. idea, right? You, 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 we use the word, we, we put it on uh, vision boards during right. executive retreats, but right. like no one can touch it, feel it, grab it, build anything with it. But chemistry feels more like something we can actually have an impact on. Yeah. Chem chemistry is more of, I, I like the distinction. I'm glad you're making it. Because again, the word culture is used much more often. But it turns into, again, these are our culture principles, which are great. And they're on the, you know, they're on the flyer. They're on the wall. They're on the, all the, the collateral for the, that's wonderful. But chemistry is really that sense, that feeling, that, that energy amongst us, between us, that who are we? What do we believe in? How do we operate? Do we have each other's backs? Do we care about each other? Do we actually care about what we're doing? You know, and that's something that needs to be nurtured all the time. You know, I just yesterday was with a leadership team for one of our clients and spent the whole day with them. We did a day long workshop. And one of the things we were talking about, and this is true often, whether again, it doesn't matter the size of the company or the team or what's going on. I was like, at the end of the day, I said, listen, everybody's feeling good right now, right? We got that buzz. We got that sort of high of being together all day and some of the exercises. And the, the question is, what happens next Tuesday or three weeks from Thursday or four months down the road when <clears throat> someone gets annoyed, <clears throat> pardon me, someone gets annoyed with someone or, you know, we don't close the deal we think we're going to close or, you know, someone's sick or we're behind on a deadline. That's where it really matters. So ultimately it is about creating experiences and, you know, opportunities for people to really bond and connect in a human way, but it really is about baking into how you operate. How do we nurture that chemistry all the time? Because again, I mean, in a different way, think of it like a marriage. My wife and I've been together for almost 25 years and like we have to continually invest in each other, in our relationship. If our marriage is going to be healthy, it's not just healthy because we fell in love, you know, more than 25 years ago and committed to each other in front of all of our family and friends. It's an ongoing living thing. And it's different today than it was when we got married, just like a company as it grows and evolves, it becomes different, especially a small business, right? And you know, this, you bring one new person into a small team and all of a sudden the whole dynamic changes, hopefully for the better, but sometimes not so much. And as we start to grow, if we're not really mindful of how we're building and sort of enhancing that chemistry, it can go away. <clears throat> the other thing I like about the term chemistry is that it 
feels it, it gives you a visual, right? We can imagine different different mixtures. You know, you pour the green in and the red in right. and the blue <laughs> in and then you stir it and then you put a few flakes of this gold stuff in and, and each little piece is interacting with each other and and forming a a, a constantly changing new entity and a and a, con- yeah. a concept that hit me and and you you briefly touched on it and I'd love for you to expand a little bit is this idea of seasons seasons of our life seasons yep. of our marriage seasons yep. of our business and that early on maybe chemistry when it's three people is super important and then maybe when you get to ten it's a little less important because you just need high performers doing shit and then you get to thirty. And you have to refocus on chemistry again. And it's like this constant evolution. How do we as leaders, how do we, how are we aware of that? How can we be perceptive of changes in our chemistry and the need to to reevaluate where it might currently be and or need to go? Well, I, look, I think the question you're asking is good and there's two parts to it, right? The season part of it, I think, is a really important one. And that's true for us in life. I mean, think of just the seasons of the year and depending on, you know, I live in a place where the seasons don't change as much as some other parts of the country in the world. But in general, right, it's different in the spring when we're planting sort of metaphorically versus the summer as it starts to get hot and we get into the dog days of summer and then we move into the fall. Right. And it's like harvest time. And then we move into the winter where we sort of have to hunker down. I mean, that's the sort of season of the year. But a lot of times in our lives, over the course of a year in a business, it does go through different seasons. And to be mindful of that, especially as a leader, as an owner, as a founder of a business, where are we right now? So there's that piece. In terms of the chemistry and paying attention to it, I feel like it's something that we always need to nurture. Now, there are going to be certain times in the business, again, seasonally or otherwise, where it's kind of an all hands on deck. We just have to get stuff done. We just have to you know, keep up with, I mean, hopefully the business is going well, we're just keeping up with what's going on, right? But I do think what can happen, and I've seen this happen with a lot of businesses that I've worked with where they're growing, is if we're not constantly nurturing the chemistry, eventually what will happen is we're not mindful as we're hiring people, things are starting to move really fast, and we're so focused on getting things done, it's not until something blows up that everybody goes, oops, we took our eye off the ball. So it's, it's difficult, right? Cause you kind of got to be able to, again, another cliche, you got to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time, right? You got to be able to both nurture that chemistry and the people all the time while constantly focusing on making sure we're actually, you know, growing the business because if there's no business and the bottom line's not where it needs to be, then it doesn't matter how much we nurture everybody, the business goes away. But if all we do is focus on the business and the bottom line, eventually we burn people out, people leave. And now we're looking at going, wait, why are we having so many issues with, you know, engagement and morale and retention? It's because, oh, we forgot to nurture that. 